Hi, my name is Mark Turner from Turner's Painting School. And during this uh, crisis, this COVID crisis, I'd like to uh, offer some free online uh, painting classes. Um, it's based on oil painting, but you could join along with acrylics, uh, crayons, uh, pencils, uh, watercolours, anything will do. But I'm going to be mainly talking about uh, oil-based paints. So first of all, before we start painting, we need something to paint on. This is what's called our support. It could be something as simple as a sketch pad. Um, ideally, this will need to be gessoed. I'll explain that as we go along. Um, canvas support. Uh, in most uh, shops or online shops still sell these. Um, hopefully you can get hold of them. Um, but not essential. If you can get hold of a canvas support, they come with stretcher bars and you normally get a pack of wooden keys that knock into the corners to tighten up the canvas. These normally come with a coat of gesso on them, uh, so they're ideal. I also tend to put an extra couple of coats on, it gives me a better finish. MDF board. Um, so you could um, look around the house, you might find an old cupboard somewhere, you could break it up. Uh, any piece of plywood, any wood would do, but again you will need to put gesso onto them um, to, to uh, help the paint. Oh, quite simply, uh, lining paper. This is a, a 1700 gram lining paper. Um, the type of paper that you put behind wallpaper and again it's been gessoed. This only a couple of coats at the moment and needs at least another coat. Um, so the gesso is important, it does many things. It gives the paint a tooth to grip onto, which is perfect. It also allows the paint to sink into uh, that gesso and it protects the support. Remember the support is what we're painting on. It protects the port from elements in the paint that might attack it and start to rot it. Again, if you can't get hold of any gesso at this moment in time, let's just paint for fun. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm lucky enough. I've got some gesso. This is my gesso. Uh, and I paint it on with a large brush. Um, the first lesson I'm going to be doing it is on how to gesso and uh, if you listen into that you can learn how to do that and if you can't get hold of gesso but you can get hold of some white uh, acrylic paint I'll explain how you can create your own gesso with the white acrylic paint. The other essential items we're going to need is some kitchen roll or um, lint free uh, cloth to wipe down and scrub back on the work. Um, other rolls of items like this may be handy if you've not got kitchen roll. You're going to need uh, something to put your paint onto. I've got a palette. Um, you might not be lucky enough to have something like this. You can use an old plate or an old piece of board and just seal it with uh, some varnish or, or some oil and let that dry. That would be perfect. You're going to need, um, ideally, three primary colours. Most importantly, primary colours are colours that you can't mix colours together to create. They are primary. That, that is their colour. Yellow, a must. Blue. And red. Any red... Any blue, any yellow will do at the moment, it will suffice, let's just get ourselves painting. And if you've got a white, uh, that would be perfect. You also need uh, brushes to paint with. I keep mine in an old coffee jar, it keeps them upright and if they've got paint on, they're not getting all over the surface. Um, you're going to need a pencil to do your sketching, a small, medium, and a large paintbrush. Uh, these are hog bristle, ideal for painting in oils. But if you've not got that, any brush will suffice for this moment in time. Any brush. You're going to need uh, something to liquidise your paint, make it thinner. 
and uh, traditionally with oil painting that would be uh, linseed oil and turpentine 50-50 mix generally uh, you can get uh, acrylic mediums um, you can get alkyd mediums um, and uh, all other forms of oil that you can use for painting with and you'll need something, a little jar to put that in don't use much of that you're also going to need something to clean your brushes if you're using acrylics it would be water or with oil paints I'm using turpentine this is quite volatile and so you must I've got a tiny little room here so I must have some ventilation going through and that I will also put in a tin to clean my brushes so you would probably have your water in here okay perfect if you've got some uh, baby wipes, surface wipes for cleaning the paint up and for cleaning the paint off your hands you can clean your brushes with this, these also and that is all we need to get started so please see what you've got around the house see what you can find and join me in the next video lesson where I'm going to teach you how to uh, gesso your supports and the importance of gessoing those supports. From there we're going to move on into loading our palettes with our colours, mixing paint and um, even carrying out the colour wheel before we start to paint pictures. I'd like to say thank you for listening in and please join us. I'm Mark Turner from Turner's Painting School. Take care.